you. Good to see you. Well, I think we have made it through the worst of this series of storms. Um, but even though the weather is shifting back to our regular pattern, we will s continue to see some challenges. Weather forecast is we're returning to more of the typical Seattle pattern of rain, but we expect the rain to be mixed with snow, particularly at higher elevations. Um, and as this snow melts, we'll see a number of challenges in our region as we try to clear out the snow, the ice, and the slush including making sure that storm drains can keep clear so that we don't have both standing water and flooding in our area. I know it has not been easy for folks, and I really want to thank the people of Seattle and this region for their patience getting through this, and also want to thank people for stepping up. We have seen so many people reach out to their neighborhoods, volunteering time at the shelters we've stood up and the like. I think it's shown us Seattle at its best. This, we've seen officially over 20 inches of snow in the month of February, and it's only February 12th. Um, it is a record for Seattle, uh, and I think it's a record for the most amount of snow in, in 40 years. I want to thank everyone for doing everything we could. We know that we've seen impacts. For example, last night, as the snow became heavier, uh, we saw a number of, of power outages as either trees fell or sprang back against power lines. Sometimes those were widespread, sometimes they were, uh, you know, one or two households. Our largest outage was almost 40,000, um, and we're in the, you're going to hear from Deborah, who will talk to you about our, our pattern of restoration. We're on the path, but not everybody will get their power back before tomorrow. We're predicting that there will be freezing temperatures probably every night. Um, and with that, the roads will continue to ice up and sidewalks will ice up. So really, we want to express to people, be cautious. Um, Metro has informed us that they will stay on their winter snow uh, emergency routes tomorrow. So if you count on transit, please check to see if your bus is coming and what time. We know that with this snow event last night, right at commuting time, that hundreds of buses got stuck. Um, we've been working really closely with them, with SDOT has worked with them to make sure that we keep that those main arterials, the green and gold routes open. Um, but we're monitoring that as we go. We've also been working with Seattle Public Schools. We helped them clear their bus lots so their buses could get out so that we could pick kids up. We're emphasizing uh, clearing the areas on the arterials where those buses go as well as the pickup drop-off places in and out of the schools. But that's still a lot of work ahead of us. I also want to thank um, both the people and the businesses of Seattle. Like I said, I was able yesterday to go to the Garfield uh, Community Center shelter we'd stood up. And as I was there, a number of people from the neighborhood walking in saying, what can we do to help? We're here. They, some of them came with their kids. Some of them came by themselves, wondering how they can do it. We also had a number of our businesses stand up, particularly to help us with the navigation team which has been working around the clock to get people out of tents, out of vehicles, out of doorways where it was unsafe, into shelters. And Amazon delivered hundreds of pieces of clothing and food so the navigation team would have those supplies. Costco also stepped up. They gave us gloves, socks, coats, um, and food. Nordstrom's also gave us uh, essential supplies. And Starbucks has started delivering hot coffees and teas and warm drinks to the shelter so that people coming out of the cold actually would be able to have hot beverages. So both our businesses and the people of Seattle have, have really stepped up. We, we said to people, make it a block party. Um, we got reports back, both anecdotally and on Twitter and, and things like that, of people that actually did go out and they shared their shovels, they worked together. Um, if anyone is wondering how they can continue we will be standing up a volunteer place where people can go um, because we have made the decision to continue both the Garfield and Bitter Lake shelters through at least next Monday um, because we want to make sure we've had this opportunity where people who've never come inside before have come inside. And we want to make sure that we get them evaluated, connect them up with the services that they're available for them and keep them. So we probably will need volunteers in each of those places. We don't have the place you can go yet, but we will have that shortly. Um, anyone who has a question for me, you can always reach me at jenny.durkin at seattle.gov. Uh, our goals really remain the same, and that is we've got to keep people safe. 
And so we're, we're, we're through the worst of the weather, but there will be continue to be associated events related to power outages, perhaps flooding. Um, we're, we're checking carefully to make sure that we don't follow up with landslides. Um, we're working with Metro to, to make sure how can we keep those buses running as clear as possible. Um, we've had uh, 36 SDOT trucks that are about roving doing arterials and, and, and a number of crews, both from the Parks Department and SDOT, doing hand shovels and the like. We will make sure that we continue to do what we need to do to get the roads clean. I will tell you, for if you're in a residential area, have patience. Um, you will not see snow plows in every residential area. We're going to be evaluating which are the ones of the highest priority. But as the, as the snow melts and thaws, another uh, danger is because of the limited visibility that snow plows have and kids are out of school, we don't necessarily want those plows in residential neighborhoods for safety reasons. So um, again, our, our emergency shelter will remain open through Monday. We'll give you greater numbers on that. I want to really thank uh, every one of our partners in HSD, but fire, police, FAS, SDOT, SPU, everyone has come together and has been sharing resources and employees in a way that I think is that everyone in the city should be very proud of. We've had people working 12 hour shifts back to back to back for a period of time now and people are getting tired, but they're also really proud of the good work that they've done. If there's anybody that you're concerned about as this weather event has continued, you haven't heard from them for a while, do you think they need help? 211, the crisis line is open, please call that. If you see someone that's in need of something immediate that's a real emergency, please call 911. It's going to be another kind of tough few days. Yesterday was probably, and last night was the roughest spell we had both on the roads and for power. And I want to really thank everyone for their patience. You'll hear now from a number of people from the departments. So we'll let you know one thing that um, I know everyone's looking now as they dig themselves out. What about my bus? Metro's not here today, um, but we'll refer you to their, their line for their snow route. You'll ask about your street. We have Sam to talk about that. We'll tell you about trash pickup, about your light service and the like. So thank you very much to the people of Seattle for their extended patience, and thank you for stepping up and helping your neighbors. Thank you. Uh, Sam Zimbabwe, Seattle Department of Transportation. Um, just to, to reemphasize a couple of things that the mayor has already touched on, uh, we're recovering from the heavy snow last night, both heavy in, in volume and heavy in, in weight. Uh, and so the uh, green and gold arterials are in variable condition right now. We still have slush on some of them. We're working to get those clear. As soon as we can get those clear, our next priority today is to try to help schools uh, getting plows to uh, school bus drop-off and uh, parent drop-off areas uh, and, w and helping Metro uh, with their operational needs. So we're in very close com communication with Metro about what their needs are within the city, um, about how uh, they, their turnbacks on smaller streets and, and things like that to keep them open. We're also helping uh, with any areas of uh, plugged storm drains uh, to help with any flooding uh, uh, flooding issues. And that's really what we foresee for the next uh, 24 hours of, of, our, of our work. Uh, as the mayor said, the uh, prediction is for freezing temperatures again uh, over the next couple of days overnight. So please, if you need to drive, be very, very careful about the conditions. We still have a number of street closed signs out. Please, those are still in place for people's safety. Uh, please don't go around those. Uh, and again, we've, we've seen an uptick in the number of crashes uh, as people are, are eager to get back to their daily lives. Please be aware, make sure um, if you're walking, uh, give people time to stop. Uh, and if you're driving, make sure you give yourself time to stop um, for, for pedestrians that are out there. Um, and, and please, again, clear your sidewalks. Uh, as soon as you can, take any break in the weather that you can get to get out there as it warms up a little bit to clear them off. It's much easier than once it gets cold again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Deborah Smith with Seattle City Light, and clearly I used the word uh, the fortunate one too many times the last few days because that ended last night. So what we had was a lot of, as the mayor mentioned, a lot of what we call springbacks. So there was the heavy uh, snow, and in particular yesterday afternoon, the really heavy snow in the north part of our system. 
uh, pushed down on vegetation and then as that snow melted, as the warmer weather came in, branches and vegetation sprang back and got into the lines. So we've had all sorts of events. We've had everything from single homes where we're, we're getting a drop into a residence. We had some transmission line uh, uh, issues and we've had all kinds of service lines and distribution systems so as well as feeders so it's been kind of a rolling we know that the peak was 39 customer 39,000 customers last night I've actually been waiting to oh see now just while we're standing here I got a new service uh, notice of, of some more folks that are out that is probably part of the restoration process so that's one thing folks can know is that often as we restore service it requires at times taking other folks out while we re-energize parts of the system. So we get kind of a rolling impact and I don't have a number yet for how many folks total have been impacted by uh, power outages in the last 24 hours, but we'll get that for you as soon as we can. So we've had all of our crews in. We, uh, we're, we're working now with the crews from last night who are still on the job and a whole slew of fresh crews that joined them this morning. We're watching carefully to make sure folks are rested and safe. Um, and uh, we expect that uh, restoration, uh, and now about 4,000 customers that are out, is at the point where it really slows. So our restoration protocol, and I think most of you know that, is we try and get as many folks on as we can as quickly as possible. So that means as time lags, you're dealing with the ones and twos and small numbers of, of, of outages that often require line patrolling and it's far more labor intensive. So unfortunately, we suspect it will be tomorrow morning, if not tomorrow <coughs> afternoon, before all of our customers back on are back on, but we hope that, that we can, can do better than that. Uh, in the meantime, it's cold and wet. Uh, appreciate your uh, continued kindness to our crews if you see them and know that they're doing their very best for you. Thank you. Hello, Jason Johnson with the City of Seattle Human Services Department. Uh, the department's priority remains getting people experiencing homelessness indoors. Uh, in partnership with King County, the City of Seattle has opened several new shelters with more than 550 uh, emergency shelter beds uh, created during this weather event. Uh, we've created separate spaces and sometimes even uh, separate shelters for uh, men, youth, families, women to come inside and feel safe. Uh, we are also coordinating uh, medical services as well as other services that people need at those shelter facilities. As the mayor mentioned, Garfield and Bitter Lake Community Center shelters will remain open through Monday morning. Likewise, the exhibition hall at Seattle Center and the armory uh, will both be uh, available and open uh, through until Monday morning. So we have those shelter resources, those emergency severe weather shelter resources uh, open uh, continuously uh, while uh, weather continues to develop. We're also coordinating with uh, service providers to work on exit plans for people staying in these shelters. Uh, those could include assessing them for housing placements, matching them with other services in the area that they may need, uh, but doing that understanding that the entire system is strained right now. We have service providers that have also, like city workers, been working 24-7 uh, and really trying to uh, 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 maximize their spaces, maximize their staffing to serve people uh, during this, this, this crisis. I want to give my thanks and appreciation uh, to those service providers. Uh, the city and its uh, ability to serve our vulnerable residents is only as strong as our partnership with the service providers and uh, we're really thankful that they've continued to keep their doors open. We yesterday did a full check of all of our contracted providers and very, very few of them uh, had to keep their doors closed. Uh, so really uh, want to honor the fact that they kept, uh, kept their doors open, stayed in business, and continued to serve people. I also want to thank uh, the Human Services Department employees, uh, in particular the navigation team uh, and the folks in our, our uh, uh, Homeless Strategy and Investment Division. They really have been working around the clock, uh, combing Seattle streets, making sure that every individual knows what shelter resources are available 
and has some way, uh, some transportation uh, to get to an indoor facility. Um, over this uh, period of time, uh, over these four nights, these efforts alone, the Navigation Center's uh, outreach has gotten 137 people out of the cold and into shelter. Uh, so I really just want to uh, honor them, thank them. They continue to comb the streets again today uh, and tonight. They are inside of our shelters, making sure that people are safe. Uh, they're doing incredible life-saving work, uh, and uh, I'm incredibly thankful to be part of their team. Also want to thank uh, Nordstrom, Amazon, Starbucks, Costco for being great partners in donating items. Uh, uh, they've been able to donate a number of food items as well as items to keep people warm like gloves and socks, underwear, blankets, coats. Uh, and uh, those donations went to our navigation team. The navigation team it has the ability to offer those uh, items to individuals who remain outdoors. Uh, they're also distributing many of those items to the shelters that are staying open who are uh, sort of stretched to be able to uh, feed folks and people come in very wet. Uh, so uh, these items are uh, really part of this life-saving effort and uh, just want to honor and thank uh, those businesses for really stepping up. Finally, I just want to add that HSD staff are also uh, calling vulnerable uh, citizens throughout the county and making sure that uh, folks, especially who are homebound, have the services and support that they need. Uh, we've been doing phone trees uh, since Sunday, and uh, I'm happy to report that, that people uh, do have the supports that they need. Again, service providers as well as HSD staff are doing everything possible uh, to provide much needed support to individuals in their homes, in these shelters, living unsheltered, uh, and uh, again, I'm incredibly uh, uh, thankful uh, for their efforts. Thanks. Good morning, Mami Hara, Seattle Public Utilities. Garbage, recycling, and yard and food waste collection is dependent on safe road and weather conditions both for our drivers and for residents in their property. This series of winter storms lined up one after the other has presented a historic challenge to our drivers who pick up solid waste. We know it's very frustrating when your recycling food and yard waste and especially your garbage isn't picked up. So we really appreciate the patience of our residents an understanding that we must wait for the next safe collection window. Seattle Public Utilities and our contractors have been driving and assessing the roads continuously and have been taking advantage of every weather opportunity. Today, crews running multifamily and commercial trucks will pick up accessible garbage, recycling, and food waste. But because of continued snow and ice on residential streets, crews are unable to collect garbage recycling and yard food waste today from, for our Monday customers. Our Monday customers are our priority for pickup. So if conditions allow, their waste will be picked up tomorrow. Customers can set out their gar garbage free of charge. Uh, Tuesday and Friday customers will be collected on a delayed schedule and services will be <coughs> extended through the weekend. So this is a, an important announcement we'd like to make for folks who, ha, whose collections have been delayed for more than one week. The city will allow free disposal of residents' garbage, recycling, or food waste at city stations, city transfer stations, between February 13th and 16th for any residential customers, as I said, whose collections have been delayed for more than a week. We'll provide the latest updates and more details about solid waste collections on our website, on Twitter, at Seattle SPU, and on Alert Seattle, so please sign up for notifications. Seattle Public Utilities crews stand ready to respond to any issues related to water or wastewater and drainage. If customers have frozen pipes, please, please do not use a blowtorch, kerosene heater, or propane heater, charcoal stove, or any open flame to thaw your pipes. It's extremely dangerous. We have tips on, about how to thaw pipes as well as protecting them from freezing on our website 
at seattle.gov backslash UTIL. The temperatures are above freezing today, so as snow and my ice slowly melt, flooding becomes a serious concern as ice over storm drains prevent melted snow and rain from entering uh, the storm drains. We have tens of thousands of drains in the city, and you can help prevent localized flooding in your neighborhood by clearing the drain inlets near your home with a snow shovel. If you don't have a snow shovel, you can use a garden shovel, a rake, even a dustpan, and make sure to get the openings in the drains to allow water to flow through. Please remember to work from the sidewalk or a parking strip and stay out of the street, out of the, out of the cartway um, when, clearing, when you're clearing your drains. And please stay safe. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Christopher Williams with Seattle Parks. I want to thank the mayor and her team for their leadership in this snow exercise here. Uh, we have 23 out of 27 community centers open across the city. We have six out of 10 public swimming pools available for public use today. Uh, we do not operate before and after school child care programs when the Seattle Public School District is closed. We mirror their schedule. Uh, we are operating uh, two emergency shelters, uh, one at Garfield, as you heard from uh, Mr. Johnson here, and uh, one at Bitter Lake as well. Uh, last rather yesterday they served a combined 300 meals breakfast lunch and dinner to uh, participants in the shelters uh, you've also heard that uh, staff is working uh, 12 and 15 hour shifts and uh, we are looking to expand the pool of employees across the city even outside of the park department who could be available to uh, work these shelters as we uh, stay open until Monday so uh, we'll be getting the word out on that our maintenance crews uh, are helping out logistically across the city, providing a variety of logistic support. Uh, we've also asked them to clean uh, storm drains adjacent to the one to the 486 parks across the system. So that's a lot of people that will be removing debris from storm drains near parks. Uh, we're asking uh, uh, our natural area crews to monitor hillsides uh, in our 2,500 acres of green belts and natural areas. Uh, we're keeping an eye on areas that have historically been slide prone areas to uh, pay attention to that. Uh, we had seven tree incidents in the past 24 hours where trees sort of have come down and buckled under the weight of snow and ice. Uh, so these are a few of the activities that your local park and recreation department uh, is engaging in as we work to partner with our city departments here. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Mami Hara at SPU who uh, helped us staff the Bitter Lake Community Center yesterday. Thank you. Very much. All right. Good morning. I'm Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief. Um, yeah, I want to thank the mayor for her leadership during this very difficult time and thank the community because you've really listened and heard and also thank all of our partners and all the partnering departments, but most of all the frontline workers who have been out there from all these different departments each and every day. I'm going to ask the community that you please maintain situational awareness for safety. That's going to be very important. In the area of these power outages, as the power is being recycled and then powered back up, if you get a notice that your power is going to be out, let's limit our creativity. Let's not have devices that are designed for the outdoors brought indoors for cooking and warming. Let's not be creative in that way. If you get the notice that your power is going to be out overnight, there's shelters and there's friends that you should go to. Let's maintain situational awareness for safety as you're walking and driving around the community. Let's be paying attention as we're, um, you know, um, transitioning around the community. That's going to be very important for us. As the snow begins to melt on our homes, let's make sure our drains and downspouts are all working properly. We're not recommending that individuals start putting up ladders and clearing those drains. We all know that snow is heavy and it's wet, and if it starts to slide down off of those roofs, it has the potential to knock you off those ladders. So situational awareness for safety is what we're asking. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chief. Um, I, I just again want to uh, take some Q&A, but again, just thank everybody who stepped up, both from the departments across the city, um, but it's heartwarming to see every day when I've gone out and talked to people, 
you know, yesterday, for example, at the Garfield Community Center, uh, the woman who's running the kitchen there is an employee of Parks and Rec Recreation who usually works in the pools, but she'd been a chef before she went to work for the city, so she got conscripted in to cook meals. She had both her son and her mother were there helping, and she told a story that, you know, one of the meals, she wasn't sure how she was going to provide food for all the people who were there. Someone came in and said, what would be your wish list? She wrote it down, they took a picture of it on their phone, and then shortly came back with everything they needed. That's the best of Seattle, and I think that if we can continue over these next days to really show a level of kindness and a level of patience with one another, um, that we'll get through this next slog, um, and then we as a city know, we're, we've learned lessons, we think we executed as well as we could have, but we're learning lessons all the way through, and we want to hear from you, but we want to say first of all, first and last, thank you for everything that everybody has done. Questions? I realize the school district is not here, but there was a mention of a focus on metro routes and areas where kids would be dropped off, picked up. How much pressure has the school district put on the city to try and clear out these areas near schools so they can have school tomorrow? I would, it didn't even take pressure. We have Sam Zimbabwe has been working closely with the school district the whole way through to determine when they thought it would be safe. We helped mobilize crews yesterday because the where they push the park the school buses. They weren't sure they could get all the buses out of the contractor's lot, so we made sure that those roads were clear, helped them clear it. I opined that I thought parents would be down there with shovels if they thought that's what it took to get the kids back in school. And Sam will tell you more, but we've been working to see how do we make sure the routes to and from the schools and on the bus routes are safe. But Sam, do you want to talk some more about that? Sure. I, I don't think there's much to add there. Just that we, I think the coordination has been good between uh, those those other agencies about knowing where their issues are, and as we hear about issues, we're we're uh, going out to help those those locations. So, um, you know, as soon as we're hearing things, we're we're trying to help get everybody back up and running. So, does it sound like they're trying to push for an opening tomorrow? I, I, again, realizing they are not here. You know, I don't know the answer to that, Chris, to be honest with you. I think they have to assess because a lot of their buses actually, they go on mostly arterials, but they have to assess the residential routes as well to make sure parents can get kids to where the buses are picking up. So I don't want to speak for them, but we'll try to get an update on that and encourage them to reach out to you. Um, Mayor, question for you or Sam. You said that residential areas are not a priority for snow plows because of safety concerns. Can you elaborate on that, especially in light that people are complaining that residential areas need to be swept so people can get to work? I don't want to say they're not a priority, and if you took that away, that's wrong. They are a priority, but we have to assess among all the residential roads which ones can be cleared and which ones can be cleared most safely first. And so the Department of Transportation is assessing that, you know, during up to this point, the, the primary routes we were clearing were those routes we needed for transit, main arterials, um, fire, rescue, police. Um, but we will continue to get into the residential areas. We obviously have a lot of residential streets here, so we won't get to everyone, and I want everyone's expectation to know that we can't physically do that. But we're really trying to look at where those most challenging areas are. Uh, and again, I want to echo what Sam said, that there will remain streets that are closed, particularly in the hilly areas. You know, if you look like on Queen Anne, for example, those road close signs really do mean the road is closed. They don't mean we just didn't pick up the sign. Um, and so let's be smart, try to stay off the road, and if you do that, we'll get through this. But it will take some time for all the roads in the residential areas to get clear. Um, and we'll get to it. If there's a particularly unsafe area that people think, again, report that to us. There's a number of ways to do it because that helps us prioritize where we need to get. Sam, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, but, but Mayor, I think you said that the driver's visibility with kids on the, on the uh, residential areas is a problem. Uh, should, is that because of sledding? Is that, uh, is that an issue? I think it's a combination. You know, on, on some of our residential streets, some of them are wide and some are very narrow with cars parked on both sides. When kids are out of school, if you're trying to decide which road to plow down and you can't see the visibility because of parked cars, we have to take that in part of the assessment. Um, obviously, we want parents to be aware too. You know, kids are probably at their most restless right now and the parents perhaps the most exasperated. A lot of people have missed work for this because of these series of storms. So again, you know, make sure that the kids are, are, you know, not trying to get that last bit of snow or sledding in in a place that isn't safe. 
for that. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, now, we had, there was a lot of emphasis today about the storm drains getting cleared. On a lot of streets, though, you know, there's uh, many uh, apartment units. You know, who's, whose responsibility is it to get those storm drains cleared when it's a little bit unclear? We are trying to get hit as many of the storm drains as possible. As we've said, Parks is going around the ones in their area. SDOT's hitting theirs. Seattle Public Utilities has crews out. If you're a homeowner in the, in the storm drain in your, in your neighborhood and you see one clogged and you can do it safely, clear it. Um, that's always going to help. So I, I would say that city will do everything that's our part, but if everybody plays a part in it, we're going to be much more safe. Is there an obligation for homeowners to clear the sidewalk in front of them? Is that, I mean obligation. It would be nice to have it done, but is there an obligation they have to? The sidewalks are, the maintenance of the sidewalks are the responsibility of the adjacent property owner. So if you've got a sidewalk outside your house, if you're the multifamily thing and it's outside your apartment building, it's your obligation to keep that clear and clean. And that's not just for snow and ice. It means keep it in good repair, make sure the roots aren't pushing sidewalks up, make sure that, you know, people won't trip. But in this incident we're talking about, you know, obviously we're talking about the shoveling and, and the like. But really it's, it's both what they're supposed to do, but it's also what's the right thing to do for you and your neighbors. Let's keep each other safe and, and we'll get through this together. Thank you very much.